welcome. Thank you again for joining us um, for our talk with Madeline Sneed Grays. This talk is planned to coincide with our current exhibition, um, a collection spotlight on recent acquisitions by Black artists. And this talk and this exhibition were made possible primarily um, by a gift from Winifred and Kevin Riley. It's an initiative for underrepresented artists. Um, and so we're so happy to have added Madeline's portrait to our collection and to have her here with us today. But before um, we introduce our guest, I want to introduce our facilitator for this um, discussion today, Clark Brown. She's our curatorial fellow um, focusing on African-American art. Um, she just joined our team in late July and Clark comes to us from um, Texas. She's a recent graduate of NYU's museum studies program and earned her bachelor's degree from Spelman. So we're really excited to have her here. This is her first program. So um, just virtually join me in welcoming Clark. Um, just a few more things before we get started. I would go ahead and tell you that we have closed captioning available and I'll be dropping that link into the chat in just a moment. We're gonna do about 30 minutes of a conversation between Clark and Madeline, and then we're gonna open up a Q&A. You're welcome at any time to put questions into the chat as always, um, but we'll probably get to those at the end of Clark and Madeline's discussion. And you can also at that time choose to raise your hand and I'll be helping facilitate just by unmuting you if you wanna ask a question to Clark um, and Madeline. So on behalf of the museum, our, our staff, I wanna thank you for being here and welcome you and just show some appreciation to our sponsors, Winifred and Kevin Riley's Underrepresented Artist Fund, um, Louisiana Cat, who generously sponsors so much of our programming at the museum. And then lastly, just ask you to consider um, a donation if you um, are enjoying this program. All of our exhibitions and all of our programming are 100% donor and grant supported. So we always appreciate any support um, you can provide. But with that, I'm going to turn it over to Clark Brown to welcome our guest. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for that introduction, Courtney. Um, again, my name is Clark and I'm the Curatorial Fellow. Um, it is my honor to introduce to you all our guest for this afternoon, Madeline Sneed Grays. I'm just going to give you a brief introduction of her. Um, Madeline has a BFA in studio art from the University of North Texas. Um, she lives and works in Denton, Texas. Her work focuses on multiple series that address racial inferiority, cultural diversity, and cuisine. Her work was recently selected to be included in the LSU Museum of Arts permanent collection by way of the Winifred and Kevin Riley Underrepresented Artist Fund. And she received an honorable mention award at the third annual national juried exhibition at the Wausau Museum of Contemporary Art. Sneed Grace hopes that her work encourages the exploration of different cultures and brings awareness to the ongoing injustices happening to the Black community. So just to get us started off, um, we're here to start this conversation with Madeline about her artwork, Two Strikes, um, that has been acquired by the LSU Museum of Art. Um, although we aren't able to meet in person, um, we hope that this conversation celebrates this new edition. And we're glad to have this virtual platform and to give you all the opportunity to have an in-depth gallery talk and opportunity for Q&A. So I wanted to start by having Madeline actually read her, um, her statement about the piece Two Strikes. Um, Madeline, thank you so much for being here this afternoon. It's an honor, thanks for having me. All right. So the statement reads, uh, do you know what that means when a human being has two strikes? Well, let me inform you. I am black and I'm a woman. Studies show that women make up just 2% of the art market and that artists in 18 major US museums are 85% white and 87% male. The fact that I rarely saw myself in artistic spaces that were and still are predominantly white is what fueled my perfectionistic ways to make certain I represent for my culture. This is what made me realize growing up that 100% wasn't enough and 110% was imperative. This is what made me how I am. I am black and I am a woman. So 
Um, that's such an interesting statement. And would you please kind of explain to us what your process is of creating this um, self-portrait? Um, did you start with a photograph or a mirror? Um, and we do have a we do have a video, and if you would like, we can have it going while you're kind of explaining and talking about your, your process. Yeah, so basically how it started, I actually got invited to a show called Our Faces, Our Voices, curated by um, Shauna Benoit and Ray Wyatt. And so they wanted to highlight underrepresented artists like myself. Um, and what's also great about this show is that a majority of the participants were female. So I really resonated with me. I connected with it a lot because, I mean, this is kind of why I do what I do or one of the reasons why I do what I do is because I didn't see myself a lot in you know, various artistic spaces. So I just wanted to be that example um, to young ladies and young women. So um, the objective for that particular show was for the artist to create a, a self-portrait of themselves. Um, and with this particular painting, um, typically the image comes first. So I do work from photos, um, but I actually thought of the title first in this one. And then I used an image that best represented the title. Um, the photo I didn't take myself, I actually used it from um, a photographer. His name is Mark, I do not know his last name, but he did have a project that he was working on that he reached out to me about. It was basically black women in their Afros. And so um, I decided I wanna be a part of that. Um, and then in turn, I just asked him, hey, can I use one of your, your photos from that shoot so that I can use it for two strikes? And he said, yes. So, um, but here you'll just see that I'm just working on detail work. I usually work uh, with, I, I start with color blocking first and then I kind of build on top of that. So this is kind of the slower process, I guess. <laughs> Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, we don't have time to watch the full video, but if you all would like to um, continue to watch it after the talk, it is on Madeline's YouTube page. Um, so you can go there and, um, and finish watching it as well. So let's continue and go back. So Is this, um, is this painting, is it going to be a series or is this just one portrait that you have um, and just for just this one event? Yeah, it was just, it's just gonna be one painting. I don't intend on making it a series, yeah. And we you know, recognize that you are an oil painter and not many women um, are interested in oil painting, so um, what made you get into oil painting and also um, what artists have heavily influenced the style and the medium that you, that your practice is in? Yeah, so actually I was told, not suggested by an art teacher um, to apply to this program. It's a summer program. Um, it's called Kansas City Art Institute Summer PCAL program. And so I applied and actually got in um, and it's basically like an artist residency, but also an art institute in a way. Um, it's for high school students and, you know, you basically, you pick your major, you work on various courses, you're there for a month. So you're in the dorm rooms and, um, and you actually get graded and you can actually use that, um, the hours that you've accumulated for, um, credit at Kansas City Art Institute or just whatever college you choose to go to. But I, you know, once I got in, I decided that my concentration was going to be um, drawing and painting. Um, I was a little nervous about the painting part because I had no experience. I was just more so keen to drawing. Um, and I thought that if I tried to work with color, I would actually ruin the piece. Like I wouldn't do well. <laughs> So um, when I started to learn how to oil paint, that's when I fell in love. And that's where my foundation of oil painting lies is Kansas City Art Institute. Um, thereafter, I didn't have any oil painting classes aside from 
um, college actually. So um, I guess in between like high school and, and before I started college, I, st I was guided by, you know, art teachers and things like that. So um, as far as, I guess, what inspired my style and medium, um, I got introduced to Jenny Seville's work in college and fell in love. I love her figurative work. Um, and I really loved her color palette as well. Um, that actually inspired my, my color palette too, so. Um, and so you talked about in your um, artist statement, the lack of representation, especially for black women um, as artists mm -hmm. in this field. So um, what experiences contributed to that research for lack of representation, um, specifically for black women in the art world? Um, and as part of that, you're talking about two strikes in your career as well. So do you have um, a network of other artists, a community that you rely upon um, going through this process or going through your experiences that you all um, kind of lean on each other through this? Right. So, um, I mean, growing up, I didn't really see a lot of Black female artists, uh, especially oil painters. Mm -hmm. um, and then even on field trips, I, I wouldn't see as I don't recall seeing any black female artists. Um, and I was also, to be honest, very desensitized um, because it, art classes weren't really diverse um, where I was. And so, I mean, it, I was usually the only black person in the class. Sometimes there would be another one, but that would be rare. Um, and I didn't really, I guess, think about always being, not always, but some, typically being the only black person in the class until like after I graduated high school. And then I started researching um, other black women artists. Uh, and then after, you know, graduating college, I was like, I need to actually continue making work and pursuing art because not only am I passionate about it, but like, I want to be an example for other, you know, women, other, you know, girls to like do what I'm doing. It's possible. Um, and in turn that honestly, you know, I, I started, you know, creating work and created the Still a Negro series, which actually um, kind of, I guess, inspired uh, the creation of uh, Two Strikes and just talking about heavy concepts. Um, and I think you asked about, uh, what was the next question you, you asked? Um, I just asked about, um, do you have a, a community of, or support group of, of Black women artists that you, um, that you rely upon throughout your career, mentors? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I have, I have a good amount. Um, and I mean, it's, it's definitely important to network in that because I mean, it's, it's wonderful, like seeing yourself in those spaces, but it's also wonderful being able to work with them. I've had the opportunity to do that um, and just get guidance. Um, and, you know, they would connect me to uh, other women and that would propel my business as well. And so, um, I mean, networking is paramount and it's important to have that uh, type of community. Definitely. Um, so you did um, touch on your Still a Negro series. Um, of course, we have a couple of images here for you all to see. Um, so this series um, talks about, you know, despite our accomplishments as African Americans, we're still seen as, as targets in the society. So do you think that the mentality is is changing going or is will it change going forward and especially you know considering all of the things that have happened since you know, the Black Lives Matter movement and even mm -hmm. during COVID in general um, going through all this. Right um I mean that would be my hope uh do I think that the mentality is going to change in my lifetime I don't actually I feel like there needs to be like true accountability um, and recognition of America's dark past for any change to occur. And I just don't think we're there yet. Um, 
so I know that you did this series, but um, you're no longer adding pieces to it. Um, so do you mind sharing just a little bit why you decided to end the series and if it has kind of sparked a directional shift in your practice? Yeah, so I actually started the series in 2018. Um, it was actually due to a show that I got invited to. Um, and the, the first Still a Negro piece, so the, the man wearing the suit, um, that, that painting I did for that specific show. Um, and I didn't intend on making it a series, but I was told that I should. And so I decided to do that. And I worked on that series off and on for two years. And then once uh, the George Floyd murder happened, um, I just couldn't mentally handle that. And so I decided against continuing it. Um, and I also thought that like, this is definitely not what the black community needs at all. Like we don't need any more traumatic narratives. So I just discontinued it. Yes. Um, and so from that you, have done another series, your France series, um, which I'm also a huge fan of. Um, uh, you've done a series of French food paintings um, from your time traveling. Um, can you share um, why you decided to create this series? Yeah, so in when I was a teenager, I actually lived um, in Japan for a brief period. And so I was really influenced by the culture there. Um, and I just, I guess that sparked my love for traveling as well. And so that in turn inspired the France series because I mean, I took a trip to my, with my family to France and it was kind of a collaborative effort to like take photos of our experiences. And so I, I chose some photos and uh, then, you know, painted them and, and made the France series. But I, I feel like the France series was pivotal, pivotal excuse me, in uh, my um, early art career because it really showed my technical skills in oil painting. I felt like I couldn't really figure that out in college because I, I felt like I just didn't have all the time that I wanted to do that. So um, yeah, I'm, I just, I love the series. I thought it was wonderful. So um, here's a couple more images for you all to look at. Um, and so, of course, this was the last series that you did. So can you hint for us, you know, what kind of work can we expect from you in the future? Uh, a lot more portraiture. Hmm. Um, maybe even more technicality, who knows? <laughs> okay. And um, so it looks like we may have, okay, just making sure we don't have any questions. Um, uh, so what is kind of the rhythm of your practice? Um, what's your, your day to day like? So it's, it's really ever changing to be honest. Um, Ideally, I would be working on, I guess, a body of work, uh, then jumping to commissions, um, and then, you know, painting for group shows, uh, admin work, various side hustles, things like that. So my schedule, like, li literally never solidifies. I feel like my current season is definitely changing. Um, I am working on a new body of work. So... I just need to be able to focus on that body of work and not really be juggling commissions and other group shows and other side hustles. So I'm actually taking a back seat from those. And so I actually end up getting a part-time job so I can just, you know, just be able to just think about this one thing. So I'm not stressing over the side hustles and other opportunities in order to fund my, you know, passion. So um, it's definitely um, a, a change. Um, I'm learning that, you know, change is okay. You know, we should definitely normalize picking up side hustles or whatever in order to, 
you know, get what you need to get done. For me, it was just like, I just need to be mentally stable <laughs> in order to hash this out. So I did that for myself. Uh, so I'm just coming to terms with just not having everything figured out and being okay with just various changes. So. So um, that's a, that's actually a great segue into um, my next question. So there we go. So um, we do want to make a point to promote your business and your um, website. So can you discuss um, your business art by Madeline? We can pull up your website here. Um, in case you all have not been on her site before. Um, can you just discuss uh, the importance of artists knowing how to navigate the business side of the art world? And um, especially I think for um, up and coming artists, students at LSU or MFA, BFA students who want to be artists full time, um, what advice do you have for them going forward um, in, in their, in their process. Right. Um, so as far as the business goes, I wasn't actually keen on business at all. <laughs> um, when, you know, in, in college and after I graduated, I figured out, well, I need to know this to actually start uh, our business. <laughs> so, um, I actually was taught by my mother. She's an entrepreneur. So she, um, you know, taught me the basics of how to run a business. She also gifted me this wonderful art book, which I have in front of me. Um, it is called Artwork. Um, hopefully y'all can see this. Um, Everything you need to know and do as you pursue your art career by Heather Darcy Bahandari and Jonathan Melber. Um, and so this book literally like teaches you how to like make a successful website, business cards, consignment stuff how to get organized with our inventory spreadsheets, income and expense spreadsheets. You got to know that for taxes, like stuff like that, like things like that, that we should definitely be learning in school. <laughs> um, so I would definitely suggest that. Um, also, there's an updated version of this. I have the older version. So, um, but it, it's definitely important because you don't want to be taken advantage of in the art world because that can happen. So, um, I mean, I still don't know everything. I'm trial and erroring a lot and that's okay. Um, but yeah, still learning. <laughs> um, as far as, I think you asked for advice. Um, I would say trust your process as an artist. I mean, you know, different artists have different ways of, of, of their processes and, um, you know, you may get, um, I guess, what am I trying to say? They, they may, you know, tell you certain ways of doing something and how it's worked for them, but your process is, is a, could be a bit different. So just keep in mind of that. Um, I guess another one would be sleep. I feel like I wasn't really good on that um and I just worked really really hard and I compromised my health and that's not okay so definitely figure out um your own rhythm figure out how you can um you know be productive but also make sure that you're getting adequate sleep to recharge um and staying consistent with your work I think is a big one um I feel like some artists are just so gung-ho about like success and whatever that looks like for them that, you know, they just think that, okay, well, because I'm doing this and that right, success is gonna come like that. And it, it, it's different for everybody. Like it may not come when you want it to, it's gonna come when it comes. So until then, just stay consistent when you're work, with your work and keep going. That's good advice, thank you. Um, so we do have your website up here. And of course, um, these are just a few of the works that you have on your site. Can you tell us um, what other things you may be able to find here? Of course, I see your bio, um, mm -hmm. contact information. Does it have you know, upcoming events or things you may be um, doing in the future or where we can, of course, where we can follow you on social media and, and all of that? 
Yeah, so on the website, um, on the artist uh, bio slash CV, um, I usually type in various events that I'll have. Um, right now it should say TBA, <laughs> but that's typically where I'll type events. Sometimes I'll have an announcement bar if I have like a current show going on. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course a contact form. So if you, you know, wanted to contact me for any reason, there is that. Um, and then as far as social media, I'm on um, Instagram more so. Um, I'm at artwork by Madeline. So. Great, thank you so much, Madeline. Well, um, we're gonna open it up for questions for the Q&A. Again, if you have questions, if you would like, you can put them in the chat um, and we can read them from there. Or also if you would like, you can use the little raise hand signal um, and we can um, mute you and you can ask your questions directly to Madeline. Clark, I don't know if you're able to see the chat, so I'm just gonna um, say there's a question from Becky Gottsigan, which is, are you still living in Denton, Texas or elsewhere? Still living here. Still living in Denton, Texas. Oh. And um, O. Price is asking how long you've been painting. Oh, let me see. Um, I have been painting for over a decade. <laughs> I think I started when I was 16. So I'm, I'm 29. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm not going to do the math in my head. I'm pretty sure it's easy, but I've been painting over a decade. <laughs> And if anyone wants to raise their hand and ask a question directly, um, please feel free to do that. We have another question that asks, um, they saw you're wearing your headphones in that video um, while you're painting. So they're interested in what you listen to. Oh yeah, um, it kind of varies. Um, sometimes I'll listen to music, um, more so instrumentals. Um, I like this musician, his name is Sango. And I don't really know how to describe his, uh, his art form, but it's very upbeat. Um, uh, he uses a lot of like Brazilian inspiration. Um, and so I, I like that a lot. Sometimes I'll listen to podcasts um, and that's, that's, a, that's about it. Or watch, uh, not really watch, but have a YouTube video playing in the background. And that's kind of like white noise sometimes, so. Let's see, we have a question from um, Jen Blanchard. Hey, you said something about discontinuing the series because of what happened with George Floyd and um, trauma and not wanting to paint because of that. And I'm kind of curious more about that and your feelings on that because you know I I'm thinking a lot about what's going on in the world today in Louisiana today and you know as much as we want to live in a positive light there are things that people don't see if we don't draw attention to it or bring attention to it and so you know I understand maybe for yourself, not wanting to continue to be in a state of constant trauma, but maybe talk more about that, what you were saying, because I want to understand where you're coming from. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not only, I mean, I, I get what you're saying and that's the space, the headspace I was in, in 2018. Cause I'm like, I don't see a lot of work that's talking about, you know, black trauma and things especially in art spaces, at least, you know, where I'm at. So, um, I mean, I, I had good intentions of making sure that that was a conversation in predominantly white spaces, but as a black person, I don't want to create those works anymore. I've, I mean, I've lived it my whole life and 
to be fair, I feel like, you know, if someone else is on that wavelength of like, this is where I'm at, I think they should do that. I'm pretty sure there are uh, artists like myself that, that are on that same wavelength, but I just, I, again, I need, I, I need a break. I want to paint something um, that could be about my black experience, right? But more on an upbeat level instead of something that's gonna just be more traumatic for my community and myself as well. That's a great, great question. Thank you, Jen. Um, we have a question from Randall Henry. He says, what are, or who are some of the male artists that you found inspiration um, through and have you looked at works by Wayne Tebow? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> Wayne Tivo, yeah, I get that a lot um, with a specific work. I, I don't think it's shown on the, um, the slides, but it's like I did, I, I did cake paintings, literally, and people would ask me, is, was that your inspiration? Like, no, it wasn't, but I know who that is, and I love his work. Um, you, he added something else. What was the other part of his question? What, who are some of the male artists that you found inspiration from? Ooh. Um, who are some of the male artists that I found inspiration from? Huh. Quite honestly, the only person that's coming to mind, because he's been an inspiration of mine, um, is Casey Bow? I think that's how you say his last name. Um, he's out in New York, but he does these fabulous figurative works. He works in oils. He's very expressive. Um, and he also does insane blur effects that really inspired me. And, you know, sometimes I would just study other people's work to see how they would achieve the look that they got and then implement that into my own work as well. So while we're still on this topic, I'll just ask a follow-up. Are there any other artists you'd want to mention um, you're inspired by? Uh, it's always artists that can paint more expressively than me because I'm so uptight and I admire that. Um, uh, Sylvia Meyer, she is a, a Black female painter and I, she's very expressive with her work, um, more loose than me. Um, and she just, the way that she uses light in her work is wonderful. And she just really understands the figure and understands color theory and all of that. And I think she's also based in New York City as well. It seems like formal concerns are really, really important um, to you. Is that accurate? Some, it seems like you're focusing on some of these like people who are inspiring you formally. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I have focused on also people that paint both the form and food because I have connections with that as well. So Nadine Robbins is, she, she's fantastic. She's more technical than I, so I'm just like, I, that, that sounds like a lot. <laughs> uh, and Lee Price, she also works with the form and food as well and she's exquisite, so. Um, Jerry Hobdy asked, 100 years from now, how would you like people to remember you and your art? And what messages, if any, would you like to leave as your legacy? Ooh, hey. um, let me see. How would I like people to remember me and my art? I mean, maybe it sounds cliche, but I just want people to know that my art is authentic. It comes from an authentic place. Um, I never really force myself into work. I try and go with the flow. So like all of the series that I've achieved, literally, I'm just like, I'm just going with where I'm at in life. Um, so I just, you know, want people to know that my work is authentic and, and never forced. Um, as far as messages, what I like to leave as my legacy, huh. I don't know what messages, if any, would I like to leave? I'm not sure on that one. <laughs> I think too much. Uh, I mean, if I would say something, it would probably be on the lines of uh, just making sure to do something that you're passionate about. And that's probably cliche as well, but it's really a game changer. 
You have a long, long time, long career to think about your your legacy. (laughs) You're 29. (laughs) Um, Let's see, does anyone else want to raise their hand? I don't see any hands raising. Um, Let's see, anyone else asking questions here in the chat? Um, Clark, has anything else come up for you? It looks like we might be slowing down on, on questions. Um, I don't believe so. Um, So I think that's pretty much all of the questions. Um, anyone has any last minute comments or questions, we can have those. Um, But if not, um, thank you again um, for you all that have joined us today. And I hope you all have enjoyed this talk and enjoyed Madeline. And we're so thankful that you were able to, that we're able to do this. Um, And thank you again to our sponsors. And also don't forget to Follow Madeline on social media. Please look her up on her website. Um, Also, again, her YouTube page. You can go and find her there as well. And also, if you haven't already, please follow the LSU Museum of Art on social media. That's where we put a lot of our announcements um, and our different programming events like what we have today. Um, So you can keep up with us there and our newsletter as well. Uh, But... Other than that, if they're, see Courtney, are there any other? I think the one final thing I would say is please um, come to the museum and see our two ceramic shows are amazing right now. And the show that Madeline is included in will be up through um, Sunday, September 26th. Um, But luckily she paints in oil and on canvas. So her work is less sensitive to light. So we plan to have it out um, on view a lot. So, on behalf of the museum, I, I would say thank you so much. And thank you to Clark and thank you to Madeline um, and everyone for being here. And that's all. Have a good afternoon.